as a student of history myself, as a mother of two daughters, granted they're, they're young, so they're not here yet, I just wonder if without learning intersectionality, without learning about the history of incarceration in this country, without learning about the concept of reparations, whether or not you can understand race and racism in this country, whether you can understand systems and structures in this country that have been built on a racist foundation, and whether or not you can understand something like the conversation that we're having today about policing in America. Well, look, uh, Ron DeSantis and others like him are ideologues that are trying to divide America rather than bringing us together to share the unique experiences, uh, culture, and history that we contribute to making America great. Black America, uh, immigrants from all over the world have made America what it is today, and we are not going to tolerate the discriminatory policies of Ron DeSantis or any other go governor in the country who at attempts to deny our true history. Talk to me about the conversation you're having on Capitol Hill around police reform. What do you think is actually possible given the Congress you're operating in? Well, what was great about this week is that the president, President Biden, used the moment of the State of the Union speech to speak to the spirit, to the hearts of the American people around public safety and accountability. We believe that bad policing has no place in any American city or community, and we believe that while promoting the culture of policing, we can actually make all of our communities safe, safer. I want to thank uh, the parents of Tyree Nichols who were there in the gallery, uh, who heard the president speak about the importance of transparency, accountability, and standards, and that is what the Congressional Black Caucus is working to advance in a bipartisan way. Let me ask you a question about Tyree Nichols' family. They want a provision added that would require officers to intervene, a provision added to the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that would require officers to intervene when they witness misconduct. Do you think that's possible? It's a basic standard. Uh, our law enforcement and first responders, we had EMT officials that were there in Memphis who watched that beating occur and did nothing to intervene. Uh, so that is a provision that we are now looking at, among others. Uh, but to be clear, what we're really trying to do is pass meaningful reform to keep all communities safe. This is not a black, brown, or white issue. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is a public safety and accountability issue. And all Americans should agree that every community deserves to be safe. And with that frame, what does that look like legislatively? So first, it looks like having the data that supports uh, information. For example, in Memphis, the use of force was used three times more on black residents than white residents. That's appalling, but that's information that we have because they collected the data. There are 18,000 police departments across the country. We need that data on a national basis so that we can have transparency. Secondly, we need accountability. The lion's share of police officers to, who put on the uniform every single day do a great job. They want to go home to their families at the end of the shift, just like families want their children to come home at the end of the day. So we want accountability for the bad actors. And finally, we want to instill uh, better standards so that people cannot move from department to department, that we have standards that help uplift the profession and that provide them with the resources that they need from mental health to social services to community violence intervention that actually make communities safer. I have about 30 seconds left, but I do want to ask you, of the Shelby County, Tennessee DA reviewing more cases connected to the so-called Scorpion unit that was involved in yeah. the death of Tyree Nichols. I mean, would you see that as being part of the answer here? Absolutely, because many of these special units are then empowered to have practices, pattern and practices, which contribute to the type of bad policing that we saw in Memphis that should not be tolerated in any community in America. Congressman, thank you so much for being here tonight, especially in studio. Thank you.